Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? This is Tweak here, back again with another video. So today, I'm going to go over armor, because I keep getting asked about this all the time. It's pretty simple. Uh, so in this video, I'm just going to break it down real quick. We're going to go through the traders, and I'm going to show you guys what I do, you know, between when I'm like level 1 to 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, etc. And uh, explain the reasoning behind uh, the armors that I wear, and the armors uh, that I don't wear, and the armors that I think are a waste of money, and uh, the armors that I think are a complete trap, a complete noob trap. So, let's get right into it. And the first thing I'm going to cover is helmets, okay? The only helmet that you should be using in the early game are these. You can even use these past level 40. This helmet right here for 18k is a bargain. The deflection chance, the ricochet chance on this armor is insane. For a class 3 helmet, this thing has saved my life way more than 6Bs have. Um, this helmet right here is honestly, like, you can use this endgame. I do see people using this endgame. This helmet is such solid value for 18k that in the early game, if there was one helmet you wanted to go out and buy yourself um, and you don't have any visored helmets unlocked, get this. Never buy a cold pack. These things suck. They're absolutely terrible. They will stop basically nothing. Um... So don't waste your money on cold packs. Moving on then, Paka for 20k is pretty good. Uh, it will save you against scavs and other low caliber armors. But again, it is only class 2. So really, it might, you know, it might mean the difference. You know, if you're naked and you have a pack on, it might mean the difference between living and dying on a scav encounter in the early game or in a fight with somebody else uh, who has some crappy ammo. You know, it might save you. Um... It's almost worth just not wearing. Uh, my strat for the early game is what I'll do is I'll go to factory. Because factory in the early game is just filled with player scavs, regular scavs, other players, hatchlings, pistolings, everything, right? So what you want to do is you want to scav in on factory. And all you want to do is check your scav first. See if you have armor. If you've got like an MFUN on or a Karasa or something like that, just leave the raid. Just bank it. Um... But if you can run around factory, find a bunch of dead scavs around the place that haven't been looted, which happens very, very commonly. Um, grab a scab BP. Grab a piece of armor, equip it, and then put as much armor as you can into the scab BP and then just leave. Uh, it's a good way of collecting trizips, MFUNs, carasses, and stuff like that. So for the early game, you can invest in Paka if you like, but it's fairly hit and miss. Uh, at this point in the game, I'd say Paka is almost useless. Because most players are going to have much better ammo. And it is only class 2 anyway. Um, so now moving on to level 2 Ragman. Uh, if you can get visors for the LZSH early game. And you can grab yourself a decent piece of armor. Uh, this will save you a lot in the early game. What I usually do is I rush straight to level 4 Peacekeeper. Uh, and I will just run fast MTs with visors for like a really long time. Because it will save you against all the low caliber rounds. Before everybody has all the good ammo unlocked. So... LZSHs uh, with visors are totally worth. Um, it's just finding the visor is the hard part because I believe... Where is it? Or is it only Peacekeeper that sells them? Let me do a linked search on this. Filter by item. Do, do. Can't I set this to traders only, right? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, Peacekeeper. And this is, I believe, at Peacekeeper level 4. So, if you can find a visor, use it. Yeah, Peacekeeper level 4, $315. For the early game, these visors are worth. Um, you can get other visored helmets off uh, Rashala's bodyguards, which is usually where I get my ones early game. So, if you can kill a couple of his bodyguards, grab yourself an Alton or even uh, one of these helmets. Where is it? This one, the LZ, uh, or sorry, the ZSH, the Zish. Uh, this helmet's awesome for the early game too. And the face shield is right there as well for 18k, but you do need to be level 30 to access this. So if you want to get your hands on these helmets early game, uh, farming Rishala is the way to do it. Uh, you can farm Rishala pretty easily with the Keter method. All you got to do is funnel them into a room and just kill them one by one with the Keter. Just shoot them in the legs. And uh, it's fairly easily done. So... Uh, moving on from there, other helmets, uh, ops cores with visors are good. If you're buying an ops core and using it without a visor early game, I wouldn't bother. I think you're wasting your time. Just run the, uh, run the SSH. 
And then moving on to level four, you've got your U-Lock. Uh, the U-Lock is great. It's fairly expensive. It saves your life sometimes. I've noticed recently it doesn't matter what helmet I'm wearing. I get one tap through it unless I'm using an Alton. So the U-Lock is up to you. Depends on what your luck is like with it. Mine's pretty terrible with it, but it is a class four. It does have, um, you know, it has an okay ricochet chance. Um, same as the, uh, same as the one from level one, but like... I know it just doesn't it just doesn't save me as much as it used to but that's what always happens when we get to this point in a wipe for the early game yeah sure good helmet if you can unlock it quick enough or you can collect a couple of them on a lucky labs run or something like that um probably worth keeping and using instead of just selling it um the killer helmets the the masks all that no vision no hearing no bueno uh, I don't really like running them at all. Altons are great. Uh, Altons are awesome. It does reduce your hearing, but at least you can see out of it. Uh, and Altons can be fairly easily collected from Rashala's boys. Um, so that's pretty much all the helmets covered. I'm just going to go straight to Peacekeeper. Um, so yeah, down here we have the uh, the Sire, you know, the airframe uh, that everybody likes to run. And the X-Fills. I've used the X-Fills with the visors. Uh, the visors have very rarely saved me. Um... I mean, I know it's only class three, but like, like same as the other one, but um, it has a high ricochet chance to me. It doesn't really seem to make any difference whatsoever. Um, the only way we'll know if these are any good is at the start of the wipe, you know, will it save you for the early game because of the high ricochet chance? It probably will. But at this point in the wipe where everybody just has monstrous ammo uh, and everybody's running all the best stuff in the game, like all the ammo that they're running is going to fly through these helmets like butter. Um... So yeah, I don't really recommend fast MTs, airframes, all that other kind of stuff for the early game. Uh, in my opinion, I think helmets are a total waste of money. For the amount that you invest in them, compared to the amount of times that they actually save your life, I think everybody should just run around without helmets on. <laughs> but that's just me. I mean, maybe you're you're super lucky with helmets and uh, what they do for you. Like with the one exception of like the Alton, uh, every other helmet I seem to just get one tap through. I maybe get saved once or twice a day by my helmet. And if I die 10 times a day and I'm spending, you know, $1,300 on the helmet and then $315 or $50 on the ears and then doing the trade for the chops and then visor and all that other stuff, it's like, is it really worth it to run this thing every raid if it only saves you once or twice a day? You know, if you die 10 times, you're probably not going to have earned that money back. You know, it's like a chance at saving a three, 400k loadout, but, you know, uh, over a quarter of that is how much you spent on the helmet. I still run them anyway, just because chat reads when I don't wear helmets. But like, you can go back and watch my VODs and helmets just don't save me that much anymore. Uh, at this current moment in the wipe, I, d I think they're kind of pointless to use. Uh, and I know the comment section is going to be filled with, That's bullshit, Tweak. I, I run this helmet all the time and it saves me a million times a day. Well, good for you, man. Good for you. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I'm, I'm happy your helmets are working for you. But for me, no. I think they're a bit of a waste. Um, so let's get back to the armor real quick. Um, so yeah, we spoke about the Packers. We spoke about this helmet probably being the best one you can run in the game, pretty much. Uh, besides the Alton. Uh, cost versus cost versus efficiency, I guess. Uh, moving on to level two. Uh, we have this armor, which is a class three, and it repairs terribly. Uh, I would generally avoid this one. If you're going to use a class three armor... I would suggest running the MFUN and just buying it from Peacekeeper. Uh, it's about the same price as this, except this repairs better. Um, and there really isn't that much of a difference. Like, this has more armor points, yeah. But like, I just don't think... Uh, I don't think that the repair factor with the other armor is worth it. Because you'll ruin it really quickly compared to the MFUN. Um, the tac tech trade, I mean, if you're farming Rashala early, sure, go for it. If you've got a bunch of golden TTs hanging around, do it up. Um, the 6B2 Flora armor, uh, this might be okay for early game. Um, but I mean, it's a class 2 armor. Uh, it's probably not worth, you know, spend the extra 13k and get yourself an MFUN from, uh, Peacekeeper level 2. Uh, this is usually my go-to armor. This is the one that I run early game all the time. I'll just buy dollars and then I'll just run this from Peacekeeper every single raid. Um, but yeah, and then uh, this this armored rig here is really good too. Uh, class 3, except it has 80 armor points. Obviously, it doubles as a rig. So the nice thing about this is if it gets damaged or you want to swap it out for somebody else's, you can just drop it in raid, uh, hide it in a corner, grab their armor, grab their rig, 
and then you're making profit because you're going to get this back the next day just doing some insurance fraud um this armor as well pretty damn good armor class four but only has 40 armor points um i think it's always worth going for something that will protect you a class above um one thing to keep in mind though uh this does cover your thorax and your stomach this one also covers your thorax and your stomach so the uh tactic only covers your thorax so you need to remember with some of these armored rigs some of them don't actually protect uh your stomach uh so that's just something to keep in mind while you're running these um but yeah in my opinion for the early game once you get to level two ragman uh these two armored rigs are really good for the price and you can just ditch them and swap them for other people's armor constantly build on your armor the early game armor struggle is the biggest like thing to overcome in the early game at least in my opinion uh guns are kind of whatever you can do a scav run you can go in you can grab a couple of ak's and then just leave you know it's it's not super hard to come by guns uh armor is gold dust in the early game it is gold dust the more armor you can accumulate it's going to save you so much money so that's why i always tell people use your scav runs collect armor uh, you know always ditch your armor to take theirs that way the next day you're getting a free set of armor back do that as much as you can insurance fraud as much as you can collect as much armor as you can in the early game i prioritize it as pretty much number one uh well number two over um quest items would be a little bit more important obviously than picking up armor uh because you're trying to get through your quests quickly but yeah insurance frauding and then these two armors here are great mfun armor is great i usually tend to prefer the mfun because i don't know i've got this weird thing with play carriers where i just don't really use them very much uh but they're solid choices for sure um and then this Karasa trade. Karasa is really good for the early game. Class 3, 70 health points. Uh, armor points on it, sorry. Uh, but the problem is Tarcola, milk, and coffee. You're more likely to just find it on scavs and stuff. Uh, rather than going out of your way searching for coffee, Tarcola, and milk. Tarcola is actually expensive because it's a barter trade for the Holodnik bag. Uh, coffee as well uh, is a relatively expensive barter trade. So I would rather just, you know, find it on scavs. And then as I said about the helmets... Uh, Kivers with visors, uh, they can be really good too. Um, the Kiver visor though, there's something about it. It says it's class three, which is the same as Peacekeeper's one. But for whatever reason, I've run this a lot in the early game and I get one tapped a lot more through this visor than I do, um, the, uh, the one on the fast MT. Even though it says here, you know, armor class three, ricochet chance high. I've had really bad luck with the Kiver face shield and the Kiver helmet itself, um, in the early game so you get this is kind of up to you guys to decide if you want to if you want to try this out or not uh to me maybe if you collect it off somebody and you don't end up buying it then maybe it'd be worth running but to me kiver visor i haven't had the best of luck with it so i would normally just sell it but if you want to give it a try go for it uh and then the esfera here as well it's a class three helmet with 100 armor points that cost you 70k don't waste your money don't waste your money on something that doesn't cover your face that costs you 70k. It's a total waste of cash. Um, what does this trade for as well? Uh, two Plex. The two Plex is worth for the Zish visors if you can get your hands on a Zish. Uh, or if you already have a Zish and you can't repair it, it's got a big crack in the middle of it. You can use two Plex to trade for a new visor there. Now, moving on to Peacekeeper level 3. Um, this helmet is actually pretty cool. I ran this a lot in the early game and it saved my life a ton. Uh, it is very expensive. There's a lot of different parts to it. The cover is simply cosmetic. Um, this is the visor for it. And then if you go to level four, there's the neck protector. And then that one's for the Vulcan, uh, which is this helmet down here, which I'll come to in a minute. Uh, but yeah, this helmet, if you can afford it in the early game, uh, pretty good. I, I enjoyed using it. It was pretty good. Uh, I feel like you can hear better out of that helmet as well. Uh, the high comm striker uh, wouldn't waste your money on a helmet uh, without a visor. Uh, specifically in the early game. Uh, if you're going to buy a high comm striker, uh, you're looking at an armor class 4 with high ricochet chance. So it is basically the same as a U-lock, uh, except it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, you do get a little bit of uh, appreciation on the old stat bonuses, but like it's not really that big of a deal. So the high comm striker, not a bad helmet, uh, but early game, I would definitely rather run visors to save you from scavs and other players with low caliber weaponry. Um, obviously the Zish here is one of the best early game helmets. Uh, once you get that one task done where you get the black one unlocked, you can buy a Zish for 60k. That is like the best helmet that you can invest in. Um, I keep saying early game, but like, you know, the mid game, once you get your traders to around, uh, 
level 3 and you're hitting level 30 yourself, uh, I would always be investing in these helmets. Uh, almost every single raid. Like, obviously, if you're going to go do some pistol runs, don't bring this helmet. But if you're bringing out any full-sized gun that is relatively expensive, the Zish is what you want to bring with you. Uh, the Masca, meh. Uh, fast MT. Early game, yes. This current point in the wipe, probably a complete waste of money. Um, <laughs> as with most helmets, except the Alton, which is the uh, the theme I'm kind of going with here. Um, at this point, when you're level uh, 30, you can buy the Karasa. Uh, personally, I like to run this armor. I know it repairs really badly, but I've had a really, really great experience. This wipe specifically with this armor. People ask me like, oh, what armor do you wear that's relatively budget? Uh, this one for 72k, it's a class 4 armor with 55 health points. It's made of ceramic, which sucks. But uh, I did a lot of budget runs wearing this armor. And this armor saved my life a ton. Uh, I would definitely recommend wearing this armor over Gazelle. Uh, there's something about Gazelle that, to me, it just hasn't treated me right. So I avoid it. Uh, I sell all the gazelle that I get on the flea market. Uh, but this armor, this class 4 armor specifically, if you've never run it before, give it a try. Uh, this is like my, I don't know, my sleeper armor or whatever that people kind of glaze over. Uh, I really, really like this one. Uh, this one, I never buy. Uh, why would you when you could just spend an extra, you know, uh, 6 or 7k and get the uh, floor instead? It has more health. Uh, they're the same class. And this one has less of a movement speed debuff on it. And it has minus 9% ergonomics. This one has minus 5% ergonomics. Nah, just run just run this one. This one's better, all right? It's just better, okay? <laughs> In my experience, at least. Uh, same with this one. This is just a different color. Um, now, Redot. Redot armor is awesome. Uh, if you can afford it, Go for it, but also don't drive yourself broke buying this. It is 226k. It's a class 5 armor, um, but it is really, really solid. I ran Redot a lot in the early game. Um, it's really, really good. I really, really enjoy this armor. I still use it to this day. In fact, the main armor that I wear all the time is a class 5 armor. I never wear class 6 armor. Um, so the Redot, very solid choice. Gazelle for 120k. You can, you can use it if you want. It's a class 5 with 65 armor points. But to me personally, uh, Gazelle never really treated me right. Uh, so I would much rather use the Redot instead. Because the Redot has saved my ass more times than I can count. Uh, and the Gazelle, unfortunately, just it just simply hasn't. Um, so, in my opinion, I feel like the Redot is better. It'll save you more consistently. But the Gazelle, you know, if you find it in Raid, go for it. Or if you want to invest in it or you like it or it works out well for you, then go for it. Um, 10 GP coin trades for the Gen 4 HMK. As per usual, you'll have to check the flea market prices to find out if this is worth for you. I wouldn't be spending more than, you know, the price of a redot if that's what 10 GP coins adds up to. Um, and then this for the R glasses and the visor, uh, can be worth if you find a lot of that stuff early game. Uh, shampoo and orthodon- or what's this called again? Or- orthodontox. Uh, if you find a bunch of shampoo and orthodontox- uh, use the AVS rigs. AVS rigs are awesome, man. They've got tons of space in them. You can store two helmets in them. Uh, 70 armor points, class 4. Uh, covers your thorax and your stomach, uh, which is awesome. So, if you can get yourself AVS rigs, uh, I highly recommend them. Uh, Tactech rigs as well. Pretty good, but only cover your thorax, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and then this rig I spoke about in my barter trade video. Uh, if you can get your hands on some of these, these are really, really awesome for loot runs because they have tons of space in them. They've got... So, it's such a big rig. Um, and it trades for three bottles of whiskey. So that is down to your discretion. Check the whiskey prices on the flea market. See if it's worth to you. But class four armor with 25 slots. This is really, really good to pick up. And then the TV10 rig. TV10s are pretty awesome. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll collect these in lab runs. Uh, early game lab runs, what I'll do is I'll grab like two TV10 rigs off Raiders if I get lucky enough to find them. And then I'll fill those rigs up to the brim with as much like stims and weapon attachments and all that other stuff that I can find. And then I'll sell everything out of them and I'll hold on to the plate carrier because it's really good. Class 4 armor, 85 health points. Um, 
And they're relatively easy to find on labs as well. And there is also a trade for them as well at level four, or just a straight up purchase for them at level four, uh, Ragman. Uh, this thing for four bottles of Aquamarie, not worth. Aquamarie is way more expensive than what this rig is worth. Uh, 65 armor points, 20 container size, class four armor. Um, I almost feel like holding on to Aquamarie is more important in the early game because you're going to be using it to maintain your hydration and your energy. Aquamarie is awesome early game. And uh, just to double check, I'm just going to have a look at the old prices of it. Because I know they were about 50k recently. They might have gone up over that. Oh, they've actually dropped in price. Okay. Uh, never mind. I thought they were about 50k each. So if Aquamarie is selling for about 20k, then go for it. That trade is totally worth. Um, I wish we had like a graph sometimes of the flea market. And like we could see like the prices of items like rising and dropping and stuff. Because I swear, recently enough, Aquamarie wasn't that cheap. Now, if this is any any use aquamarie which i guess it is you could have just a one use Aquamar aquamarie uh that you could trade for these so if you keep them uh after you've used up most of the bottle you can use it for this barter trade which is definitely very worth um now moving on to level four we've already spoken about the helmets the vulcan and the visor 350k for this helmet uh nah bro no way, dude. No way. Run an Alton. It is so much cheaper. It is way, way cheaper. This helmet is not worth. Um, this helmet is doo-doo. It is not good. Um, the uh, dog tag trade and the plex trade are something that I do uh, for the Alton visors. Uh, I don't do the Alton trade, though. I just buy it off the flea market because Alton helmets are relatively cheap, like between 100 and 120k. For the helmet, and then the visors are usually between like 30 and 50k or so. Uh, so Alton helmets, in my opinion, are probably the best helmet in the game. Uh, if you don't mind sacrificing your hearing a little bit. Ulox, we spoke about this earlier. Ulox are pretty good. Um, they don't save me very much, but I wear them all the time. And, you know, other people, you know, every time I'm shooting at somebody else with a Ulox, it's like they've got a full face visor on that's class 10. So, <laughs> um, now the Zook, the Zook armor. This armor is awesome, but it repairs terribly. That is the main issue with this armor. It repairs absolutely terribly. It's a class six armor that covers your thorax and your stomach, made of ceramic. Uh, trades for two vases and three teapots, which is worth. Um, but I hope you have a lot of vases and teapots, because if this thing gets zeroed like two times, three times even, uh, the durability drops way down. Um, but yeah, whenever you can get your hands on this, you want to bring out an Alton or something like this, or something like that, um, this armor is awesome. I really like the Zuck. Um, also, the TV-10 here for 95k, class 4, 84, or sorry, 85 hell points. Uh, this is worth, definitely worth. Uh, the nice thing about this is, as well, is you can fit two helmets into it too. So when you're doing lab runs, I recommend bringing these because you can fit extra helmets into the slots if you're not bringing that many mags with you. Uh, and it's just more storage, more storage for loot runs, which is nice. So 95k, pretty damn reasonable. Um, the tag tech for evades and six chainlets, totally worth, uh, 10 level 20 dog tags. If you have specifically level 20 dog tags, uh, this is kind of worth, uh, it's up to you though. Uh, I would probably do it if I collected dog tags, but remember that once the level goes over 20, you're getting reduced value every single time. So, and then a skull and two gold chains for an A18. Totally worth. Do that trade whenever you can. This is a good rig. Awesome for loot runs. Um, now, Gen 4 full. I don't like running Gen 4 full because it slows me down too much. Uh, it covers your arms. And the reason why I never wear armor that has arm coverage on it. Uh, it's simply because, for whatever reason, raiders and scavs like to zero that armor. Like, Killa will laser in on your arm. Scab boss guards will laser in on your arm. Um, I would rather my arm just get blacked out and my armor not get destroyed. Uh, because if you get shot in the arm a couple of times, it'll zero it really quick by raiders. Uh, that is why I stopped wearing full protection body armor in Tarkov. For one, it makes you way slower. And two, for whatever reason, raiders and other scavs and AIs like to laser down your arms. And when they're doing that, they're going to black your arm out anyway. But while they're blacking your arm out, they're going to demolish your entire armor. And then your armor is completely scuffed. That's why I totally stopped wearing um, the Gen 4 fulls. And in my opinion, 
I don't think anybody should ever be running around in forward armor. It slows you down so much. Uh, it's such a bait. It's class 6 armor with 75 health points. Yes. Oh, but it must be so good. No, it's terrible. Uh, same with this samurai armor. It is awful. Don't ever use this. It is such a waste of money. It will get you killed more than it will save you because you won't be able to run away and you won't be able to move when people are fighting you. Um, I do not recommend it ever. Uh, if you're memeing around on factory, yeah, go for it. Have fun. But like for like a serious raid uh, that you want to survive, do not wear fort. Do not wear uh, this Redot T5. Uh, the Gen 4 full is... It's not quite as bad, but like it's still pretty damn bad. Um, yeah, so Gen 4 fulls, Ford armor, and T5s, I don't really recommend. Now, the Gen 4 assault, I don't wear this anymore for the exact same reason, uh, that it has the arm armor, and I just don't think it's that good. In my opinion, uh, the best armors to be running, uh, once you get past level 40, or once you get to, uh, at least level 3 Ragman, is the Redot T5. The uh, high mobility Gen 4. And I'm going to show you guys here real quick for those of you that haven't seen it before. So if any of you guys know who Killa is. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So this is the armor that I exclusively run. This is the armor that Killa wears. It is a class 5 armor. It has very little movement speed modifiers on it. Uh, same with turning speed, ergonomics. It is... IMO the best armor in the game. Uh, what I do is I will go to the flea market and I will type in condition like, uh, I'll usually, I think I usually do like 80, 80% and then we'll turn off barter trades. And then you can pick this armor up for about anywhere from like 190k all the way up to like 220k for like an almost full health one. Um, now the reason why I like to run this armor and I'll buy one here just to demonstrate it. Uh, let's just go, uh, let's do like 30 to 100. So let's find one here that's kind of scuffed. Do, 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 do. This one's kind of scuffed. All right. So, uh, 29.4 out of 56. Now, usually, you never want to repair good armor with Propor because it destroys it, right? It really destroys the armor. Now, for Propor here to repair, um, what's that, like 26 armor points? You're looking at 23k, all right? You do it for Mechanic, you're looking at 54k. Now, look how much this bar down here moves when I swap between it. It doesn't really matter who you repair this armor with. I always repair this armor with Propor, uh, because if you get this armor and it starts off at 60 HP, you can, like, because, like, the odds are you're going to, what, survive maybe five, six, maybe seven, eight raids uh, with this same piece of armor. Um, even if it gets zeroed every raid, that's only going to cost you, like, you know, 100 to 140k in armor repairs if you're always repairing with Propor. Um, or maybe a little bit more than that if it actually gets zeroed. But it costs very little to fully repair it. Uh, the armor degradation is like the best in the game, pretty much. Uh, you can buy these off the flea market from anywhere from 180 to 210k. Uh, it's way better than the Redot. Uh, this is why this is the only armor that I run, pretty much. Uh, I even have like a couple in here. I need to restock as well, actually. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, the killer armor is the best you can get. It has saved my life countless times. Um... If you're really looking for like a good end game armor that you want to run all the time that's relatively reasonably priced, the killer armor is really good. And then save up your trades for the Zucks and then save up your trades for the Gen 4 Mobilities or pick up the Gen 4 Mobilities uh, for about the same price in the flea market. Uh, the reason why Gen 4s are the price that they are is because you can get them off Raiders and people collect them and then sell them on the flea afterwards. Um, so yeah, IMO. My general loadout almost every single raid is a killer armor. Uh, along with maybe an x -fill helmet, depending on how I'm feeling, or a U-lock with tax sports, uh, or an x -fill with Swordens. Uh, and then for raids where I'm bringing out really big stuff and I really don't want to die and I want to try and like survive it as best I can, I'll always bring an Alton with me. Um, so yeah, I feel like we've pretty much gone over everything. Um, 
So yeah, quick summary in the super early game. I would always recommend using MFUNs. Um, and these two plate carriers here are really awesome for the early game. Kivers, you can try. If you can get a visor for an LZSH, I feel like these more consistently save you than Kivers do. Um, I know this is weird of me to say because they have the same stats and theoretically they should be the exact same. But that's just from my own personal experience. I'm only going off personal experience. I'm not going off the stats of these helmets because in my opinion, there's a lot of other stats and like information behind all this stuff that changes the outcome of what happens when a bullet hits it um so yeah altons are your best friend zishas with visors are like the best value that you can get for the early game once you get the quest done i keep saying early game but once you get to level 30 you get ragman unlocked um always collect them off scab boss and uh collect grasses wherever you can so yeah for like lab runs and stuff like that always you high, use high level stuff or try and do budget pistol runs with a play carry if you don't mind sacrificing the card if you just instantly die uh and then packers kind of up to you you're better off buying a packer if you've absolutely nothing a packer will save your life against scavs and stuff like that so yeah lads that is going to a boot do it for me i keep getting asked like uh oh geez wrong cam i keep getting asked uh what are my favorite armors? What are the best armors? You know, what should I be buying? What should I be using? I just wanted to put this out there and put all my points in there uh, so that you guys can just watch it and, like, get behind my reasoning as to why I use the things that I do. So, lads, without any further ado, that's going to do it for me. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like. Give it a now comment. Uh, hit the old subscribe button if you enjoyed it that much. And uh, if you guys want to go follow me on Twitter... Uh, the links will be in the description. And if you want to come see this kind of thing done live, go to twitch.tv slash tweak. I'm live pretty much every single day. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace out, my dudes.